if you've used DLSS in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you'll know the problem, and that is blurry glass cockpit displays, especially on airliners, to the point where for me, DLSS just wasn't usable. Now, NVIDIA improved things last year with DLSS 4.0, but in my testing, it still wasn't good enough. Now though, DLSS 4.5 has just been announced at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and it's looking very promising indeed. So today we'll look at how it works, how to install it, how it performs, and also whether I can swap my 24 gig AMD 7900 XTX and go back to my 16 gig 4080 Super when running 4K at my ultra-ish settings with DLSS 4.5. So let's start by looking at why DLSS 4.5 is such a big deal. To understand DLSS 4.5, we need to rewind a year and understand DLSS 4.0. Last year, DLSS 4.0 brought big visual improvements by moving from a convolutional neural network to a transformer-based AI model. Transformer models are what power the likes of ChatGPT, so it was great to see the latest and greatest AI tech coming into DLSS upscaling. Last year with DLSS 4.0, NVIDIA showed off how the new Transformer model improved image clarity and detail in motion. One example they used was a holographic screen, I think in Cyberpunk 2077, with some scrolling text, which made me think that perhaps NVIDIA would solve the blurry glass cockpit display issues with DLSS 4, but I don't really think it was to be. Fast forward a year and now we have DLSS 4.5 which uses an even newer version of NVIDIA's Transformer AI model. It improves once again on image quality and detail in motion. So is this the year where DLSS can solve our blurry glass cockpit display issues? Let's find out. To get it working in the sim, it's really, really simple. You need to get the NVIDIA app, and at the time of recording, DLSS 4.5 is only available if you opt into the beta version of the NVIDIA app, which you can do by going to the settings tab, go to the about page, and then check the opt-in box. From there, you need to go to the graphics tab, select the sim, then scroll down to DLSS override model presets, go to custom, and then for super resolution, select latest, which will make the sim use preset M, which is the new DLSS 4.5 version. Click apply, and you can go and boot into the sim. But does it work? So to find out, we're gonna do some takeoffs out of Edinburgh, one with DLSS 4 and one with DLSS 4.5. We'll also look at how it looks without DLSS at all. We'll be running with my preferred graphic settings. I'll roll those across the screen for you now, and we're going to be running at 4K. So let's start with DLSS 4 to demonstrate the problem. On the ground, before we take off, the screens look all right, but you can see once we get moving, things start to take a bit of a turn. For the sake of comparison, let's show you the same thing running TAA, that is to say no DLSS upscaling at all, and the difference, in my opinion, is very very, very real. So then let's do a side by side of DLSS 4 and DLSS 4.5 running in quality mode as we take off out of Edinburgh. I'll be quiet for a minute and let this departure kind of play out and give you the full picture. Let us know in the comments what you think. Don't go anywhere though because we're going to talk in a minute about performance and VRAM usage afterwards and we'll look at whether my 4080 Super can make a triumphant return into the sim rig. So yeah, to me, that looks really quite good on DLSS 4.5. Not perfect. There are points where you can make it blur. Uh, for example, I wasn't recording this bit, but I did like a nosedive in the altitude tape, obviously started moving really, really fast, which resulted in a blur. But if you're flying normally and properly, which of course I always do. Oh, in the bed, 500 feet per minute. I think you're going to be just fine. But yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear from you on this one. Just to quickly show you how they compare when running into performance mode with DLSS, you can see that while DLSS 4.5 is still an improvement over DLSS 4, it is starting to feel a little bit fuzzy and I'm detecting a little bit of blurriness on the glass displays with DLSS 4.5 uh, when we compare it to what we just enjoyed with DLSS 4.5 running in quality mode. Performance mode with DLSS, kind of post DLSS 4, has come a long way. In the days of DLSS 2 and 3, performance mode to me always looked a bit iffy in a wide range of games, but thanks to the new Transformer model that DLSS 4.0 introduced, it now makes performance mode look like a viable option. But in my opinion, I think in the context of the sim, I would still be tempted to remain in quality mode in light of the kind of inherent issue that we've got with the glass cockpit displays. 
So then I suppose a, a good question would be, does all this extra clarity and detail in motion that we get with DLSS 4.5, does that come at a cost to our performance? Uh, we're going to do a few landings into Edinburgh to find out. We're going to run the Phoenix this time, as the glass cockpit colours are different uh, in the Phoenix compared to the 737, as we now have green on black for the altitude and speed, etc., which might react differently in DLSS compared to the white on black that we saw with the 737. So just to quickly compare uh, TAA, so no DLSS upscaling on the left and DLSS 4.0 on the right in quality mode, you can see that DLSS 4 is showing quite a lot of blurriness on that altitude readouts, even at what is quite a low rate of descent on final here into Edinburgh. At around three miles out, TAA is getting just a shade over 40 FPS, while DLSS 4.0 in quality mode gets a good 10 plus FPS extra kicking in around the 53-54 mark. FPS wise you can see that DLSS 4.5 kind of splits the difference coming in at around 45-46 FPS at around 3 miles out. So visually, yes, the glass cockpit displays are looking much better when we use DLSS 4.5 in quality mode, uh, but it does come at a cost to performance when you compare directly between DLSS 4.0 and DLSS 4.5. The DLSS 4.5 Super Resolution is said to be backwards compatible with 20, 30 and 40 series cards. I'm obviously running it here on a 4080 Super, but I can't help but wonder if you maybe had an old 20 series card, would the performance gains be even smaller than what we're seeing here? Of course, to get some extra frames back, you could run DLSS 4.5 in balanced or performance mode to try and get some extra uh, performance, and you will get the frames. For example, at three miles out, DLSS 4.5 in balance mode was getting around 51 FPS, which is still lower, um, you know, just slightly lower than what we got in DLSS 4.0 in quality mode. Now, it's not until we go to performance mode with 4.5 that we start to see FPS numbers that resemble or exceed what we had with DLSS 4.0's quality mode. Although I will say that the smeariness on the glass cockpit displays was more apparent to me in DLSS 4.5 when I dropped from quality to balanced and then obviously even more so when I dropped to performance. Being concerned that all these recordings I'm doing might get trashed by YouTube compression, I filmed my TV with my phone to try and give you a bit more of an accurate representation of what I'm seeing with my own eyes. If you pay close attention to the altitude tape here in quality mode, I think it's looking really quite respectable indeed. Like, not about to say it's 100% perfect because I know it isn't, but it's a long, long way from DLSS 4.0 and light years ahead of what we had with DLSS 2 and DLSS 3 from years prior. This is really nice in my opinion. Balance does start to see some of the blurriness appear though, only just, um, and of course this is heightened if we drop to performance mode. So for me, I think despite the FPS impact, I'm probably going to run this, if I am going to run this, in quality mode. So FPS numbers and visuals to one side, we should look at the VRAM situation. This time last year I was running full time with my 4080 Super in Flight Sim 24 and I would often run into VRAM issues when running my preferred graphic settings which is a slightly tuned down version of Ultra at 4K. So much so that I side graded to a 7900 XCX just to get the 24 gigs of VRAM. However, when I was running the 4080 Super I was not using DLSS due to me disliking the blurry glass cockpit displays even with DLSS 4 that got introduced last year. So now with DLSS 4.5 having improved the glass cockpit displays significantly, could the 16 gigs on my 4080 Super now be enough if I'm willing to run with DLSS 4.5? It stands to reason that it might due to DLSS rendering the game at a lower than native resolution then using AI to upscale it. So pulling into the gate here at Edinburgh, this is having done a eight mile final landing into runway 24, then taxiing all the way across the airfield to stand 22. You can see that we're using around 10.5 gigs of VRAM uh, with no DLSS at all. If we then run DLSS 4.5 in quality mode, you can see pulling into the gate, we're actually using more, uh, around about 11 gigs, and in performance mode, we're still at around 11 gigs, um, about 11.2. So um, perhaps then we are seeing a VRAM increase as a result of using DLSS 4.5 as opposed to not using DLSS. I don't know. I think it's fair to say that running DLSS hasn't really helped with the VRAM situation, although to be using 10 to 11 gigs on the ground at Edinburgh from Pirogi isn't bad anyway, regardless of of whether we got DLSS on or off. 
running my 7900 XTX, I've seen VRAM usage exceed 15, 16, sometimes even 17 gigs of VRAM on the ground here at Edinburgh. Now, perhaps some of that is because the VRAM is there and it gets used more liberally, or perhaps AMD is just a bit more trigger happy with allocating VRAM compared to Nvidia. I don't know, but keep in mind that this is all being done today with these tests without being connected to that sim on a busy night here at Edinburgh. It, you know, there could be several planes rolling around which could also contribute to an increased use of VRAM. I think then the only thing I can really do is roll with the 4080 Super using DLSS 4.5 in quality mode for a good few streams. Maybe, just maybe, the 4080 Super can be reinstated on a full-time basis if DLSS is now back on the cards. And videos like this are great and the testing is really useful, but there is no substitute for a five or six hour long live stream on that sim when you're in and out of big heavy airports like Heathrow, like Gatwick, Edinburgh, Amsterdam, etc. If your card or your setup is going to crack under pressure eventually, a live stream is the way to try and make it do that. On which subject, uh, get subbed, ring the bell if you haven't already, that way you'll get notified when we go live on the channel, or if Twitch is more your thing, come over and join us over there at twitch.tv slash airnot. Do pop by and see how things are going on the GPU front. If you found the video today useful, please, please, please hit the like button. It helps the video and the channel a ton, and do share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, though, you will take the very best care of yourselves, be good to each other, and as always, happy flying.